Welcome. It's GitLab Plugin Modernization. This is the 14th of July, 2023. Thanks for joining. All right, so Harsh, what topics do you want to be sure on the agenda? Yeah, so I listened them. First of all, like uh, I decided that uh, I want to, like in the first milestone, second milestone pull request, I want to add the test. I, I, I don't want to make a third milestone just for the test because like I'll be discussing uh, the reasons now, but like that's what I want to do now because like I don't want things to be unreliable. Like in the first milestone also, I don't want things to be untested and unreliable. So because because I have some like a huge chunk of break up around one, two weeks because of my semester examination got over. So I have some holidays so I can work more. So it's good. Like I can manage the tests also. Okay. All right. So so your proposal then, just to be sure, your proposal is because I thought milestone one was already largely done and we could complete it by merging the change into that GSOC code base or into yeah, that GSOC it, branch. Is there any reason it, we shouldn't do that merge? Like for the test, like I, I was working on the test. I'll explain more about it. But yeah, other than this, I don't think so. There is some problem. It should be fine, actually. So we've got we've got changes requested still open in okay changes yeah. requested from Basel still in the in this branch. Did you ignoring the test? So yeah, I enabled the tests currently. Uh, right, and no 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 complaint about en uh, enabling the tests. Uh, but all right, so here's his comment that says two weeks ago two weeks oh, yeah. ago. Hey, we got an angry Jenkins that indicates a bug that I think should be resolved before we merge this into the, into the, not the main line, but into the GSOC 2023 project branch. That, yeah. that bug, I cast it using a general exception. I was just asking if I could use a better exception, like processing, processing exception or a web uh, socket exception, but uh, like uh, I would actually prefer a general exception mode than that because like I, I cannot really specify a manual exception like processing exception and uh, like the web implementation exceptions and all that because it may happen that it goes out of them. So like I want to cover a general thing. That's what I, that's what I did. Like I committed the changes and it's working fine after it. I don't see any angry Jenkins after that. Ah, okay. So was, I think what you just said is this then is resolved and all you have to do is make a comment here that says this is resolved. Yeah, like yeah. yeah. Okay, good. But and are I there? Just, I was just waiting for the test. Great. Okay, so just to be sure, did I understand correctly? I think what you said is that you've made code changes since these comments were put in, and those code yeah. changes have resolved this, so you no longer show an angry Jenkins. Yeah, no angry Jenkins now. Okay, good. All right. Okay, so let me make a note there. So. You had said including tests in the milestone and and no objection and that's that's I think you said that the tests are already enabled in the first pull request in PR fifteen oh one fifteen zero one okay and they are passing no they are not no they are not passing they are not passing okay all right so so you're saying before merging. PR 1501 want passing tests. Yeah. I want okay. And now for me, I thought I liked, I thought Basel's approach was, Hey, it's perfectly fine if we merged PR 1501 as it is. And you did a new PR for, for the, the, uh, to make the test pass. It doesn't have to be outside the milestone, but I'm fine with whichever you, you feel like you have a preference. You would like to do them in that pull request. Yeah, I like I, I I have that preference because like in the milestone three, like what Basil wanted was to complete the first milestone and second milestone because like completing the first milestone will create a base for the second milestone. That's what he wanted, and after mm -hmm. that I could uh, like the, provide the code for the second milestone and then a milestone three with all the tests that are possible. But uh, the problem is like it 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 can make the code unreliable because if my base like the first milestone is unreliable, it is not unit tested properly then it can it can create a mess like even if i did the interactive testing i just want to make sure that it's it's working like it should not break or something because i am basing my milestone two over that 
so at and the other reason was i was already working on the milestone one test the only problem was uh, that i was facing was during the connection that i was not able to patch the connection i will discuss more what the problem that i am facing right now if i am able to patch that the whole test will be almost covered there will not be much work to do i am still open to making a third milestone like for all those tests if i am not able to do it but i am quite positive that i have, i will be able to pull it off as well as the milestone to code that i am writing the code is also working quite well like i it's not working interactively but when i debugged it it was working quite well so i am also quite positive on that so maybe i could just pull it off if if it does not work then of course a milestone 3 will be fine for me okay all right so so i i don't object chris are i assume you're okay chris if if we extend milestone 1 are you confident that you're going to be able to achieve milestone 2 before the end of the project with this with this yeah okay good that's my, my, uh, the my yeah the milestone 2's only problem is the execute is not working which i'll have to figure out why is it why is it not working after i figure out why it's not working i don't think so i'll face much issues with my i'll show you i'll i'll debug it right now just like what what's happening that's why you you'll understand the code is not incorrect i i don't know i didn't even touch the execute but it's still not working so i need to find out what happened i just ran through some jenkins core code base and stapler request code base and it's quite huge so it takes a bit of time to understand what what the hell is actually happening okay, okay. so so i think you're saying that you'd like to make the tests work on milestone 1 and then get merge the milestone one milestone one branch pr1501 then use that for the milestone two completion is that did i say that correctly harsh yeah and meanwhile the milestone two draft pr will be also be there just so that we could see that it's working perfectly and after that i'll combine them both and they'll they'll almost get merged at the same time okay yeah there's part of me worries about the danger of that but your project your choice the, uh, the parallel work is is more difficult and i'm more likely to make mistakes when i do things in parallel but but getting the tests working is certainly a good goal it's i th i thought basel had a good idea of saying hey we don't care about tests in milestone one but if you feel strongly hey you'd like the tests working let's do that i like that we know we can't yeah. merge to the master branch until tests are working right absolutely yeah but like I i'm open to change of course like if i'm not able to get this uh, get that milestone one test working this week then i'll go ahead with what basel said okay but i good. just want to take that extra pressure so that i could work a bit harder like i just like pressure for you okay all right if milestone tests one tests are not working this week then reconsider and may merge without requiring working tests yeah. is that a good way to say it so merge to the gsoc branch good okay that's great Okay, so the next thing that I wanted to talk about was the 404 that was occurring before I made the changes, like in the plugin, the 404 was like the mark tested how mm -hmm. it was happening. It was happening in the abstract uh, webhook trigger handler and I didn't do anything. It was there in the plugin from before. So we'll have to look into that matter also why it's happening. I didn't see any logical flaws, but I haven't really debugged it yet. So I'll debug it and find out why it's happening. That's well, and and I'm not worried about you investigating the 404. I was just curious, or I was surprised. Mark was surprised that there was no visible, no visible harm to the user experience from that 404. Yeah, it will not harm. Right, and. That four that that the four oh four caused no 
And, and even that, okay, no problem. It may just be a, a logging thing that it's logging more than it should. It should never have logged the 404. But then the other surprise was Mark was surprised that the... From that the connection the, timeout. Yeah, the connection timeout in new code caused no visible harm. Yeah, it will not. I know. So, so those two things, again, we don't have to address Mark's surprises. The crucial thing we need to address is, is it functioning correctly? Are we getting what we expect? Yeah, let me explain, like, in saturated so your curiosity. What's happening is, it is it, it, it's, it's trying to set the pending, uh, like the build which, is, which it is getting, it is trying to set it to pending. But the problem is, like, uh, if it's not able to set the build to pending, it catches the exception in the GitLab API exception and says the build, like the, it was not able to set it to the pending mode. So it was not one. But, but what happened was when I changed the code, it GitLab 4J does not really get the 404 because it does not, it does not know about the Jenkins build, right? So it gives me a socket timeout exception. Like it, it tried to change the commit status, but it, it was not able to change the commit status. That's why it gave me a socket timeout connection. It was not able to find the build, maybe. That's 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 what 404 is, right? So that's why it's happening. I will show you also in the code. But it it will not harm the user experience at all. Even if it's not able to change the uh, change it to pending state, it does not really matter because if, if the code is actually running perfectly functionally, then it will it, it will automatically do it to success, skipping the pending thing. So yeah, that's why it's happening. Okay. That's so a valid thing I I skipped it, yeah. Well, so then that seems like that says you've already done enough investigation. You don't need to worry any more about that then. But yeah, I'll, I'll still take a look because it, I don't know why it's not setting it to pending. Like, like there must be some huh. reason, right? Because why it's not getting set, set to pending? Why am I getting? Is there, is Are there any edge cases where it, it actually is able to set it to pending or maybe I'm not testing it interactively properly? So yeah, I'll, I'll take a look on all those things also. Okay, all right. Again, for me, that is much lower value and lower priority than yeah. your work on the tests, right? Your interest in the test is feels like the most valuable thing. Yeah, the, these are the nitty gritties that I'll take uh, take a look uh, after the milestone two gets completed. Because if the milestone two, two gets completed, the project is almost perfect. Great. Okay. Good. Okay. So the next thing that uh, I'll be like, yeah, what can I show is, uh, what can I tell you is I, I want to show you that the uh, resolve method of the second milestone that I, uh, like the draft beer that I made is working. I'll show you the, I'll debug you that it's working perfectly. And also okay. show you that the execute is not working. And I need to show you because like, I need to find the problems why it's not working. The execution cycle is, uh, the execution time was quite big of the debugging that I was doing. So like, uh, I need to figure out why it's not working, the stapler requests and all those security handling, it was a complete mess. Like, so I need to show you also that, uh, like, can you debug it? Also, I, so, and well, I'm, I'm yeah. not sure I can debug it, but I'm happy to have you show it. So do you want me to stop sharing my screen and we'll have you share yours? Yeah, wait a minute. Like I, it, it's going to be a long minute. Like I'm going to show a lot of things. So, okay. Uh, uh, I'm more like, I also I also debug the tests of the milestone one to show you what's the problem that I'm facing regarding the connect regarding testing the connection. Uh, so yeah, that's also one more debugging section we have. Okay. Also, like uh, the integration tests that are there in the GitLab plugin currently uses Wiremock and Wiremock is not able to like the test uh, automatically test the proxy, the proxy settings that we'll be doing. So what I want to also propose is that we start using the test containers instead of like the Wiremark and all. That because uh, using the test containers, uh, we will be able to test the API. Uh, what what's that called? The Docker Docker image of the proxy client or the the uh, client that we will be using to test the proxy services. We can create uh, create an instance of the container and then we can also create an instance of Jenkins container put in HTTP proxy and HTTPS proxy in that, and then we can maybe test it. I have not really tried it. I just hypo, it's just a hypothesis, but yeah, that's one thing that I would like to propose. Like maybe it could work. It could be better. Okay. So this, when you're saying proposing to use test containers rather than the existing wire, wire mock based test, 
that's those are the tests that it's been years since they last ran successfully. Is that correct? Yeah, they're Docker based. Yeah. Okay, these are the the Docker based tests that have not run successfully in many years. And and again, for me, that's I have no objections to that, but I think that's lower less of a concern because we're doing interactive testing for now and so i'm and i assume when you talk about this this is after milestone two as well yeah the, like uh this is this is after milestone three also like after okay. when we will when we will try to test the proxy of course we'll be testing it interactively but uh using test containers will make the like the test suite better so i'm just proposing it i'm not telling you that i'll be doing it maybe if i get time i'll do it but I'm just proposing that this could be also a very good solution. I see. Okay, thank you. Good. All right. So proxy testing, because proxy testing, we can do interactively. And and interactive testing is much faster to, to configure, to create and delete than, than creating the automation to do the same thing. So, so proxy testing, certainly we could do interactively. And if time allows... It would be great if you could do test containers, but it's certainly not required. Yeah, but like using the test containers also will make it will ensure that we use the latest GitLab instance and all these things which are which right. are used in the test is, is is latest. So if any breaking changes happen, it will be able to identify it fast. So it's just better, but not the part of the project, I guess, because like it's a stretch goal, right? Right. Okay. Good. Yeah, so I think that's all that I will be discussing today. Okay, so then I'm going to stop sharing. And do you want to share your screen? Uh, like, wait a minute. I think in which order, in which order I should be showing you. Whatever uh, order okay, works for you. I'll take notes yeah. one way or the other of what you're doing. Uh, let, uh, like, I'll first show you the. Hey, wait a minute. Is Vassal not here? He is not. Oh, that's bad. No worries. Okay, so first I'll show you the milestone two, then I'll show you the milestone one test cases, what problem I'm having. And yeah, it should be fine. Okay, so milestone two, milestone one test cases. Great. All right, so let's let's go with that. Chris, are you ready? Yep. Okay. Okay, let me get my screen set up so I can see your screen and still take my notes. What's, just you're not moment. able to see my screen? I can see your screen just fine now. Okay, no. no. Okay. So. Okay. You see this four or four? That, that, that's the screen that I'm having in my life right now. Let's see. Yeah, so I'm using the like the latest development version from my draft PR that I made. Okay. And this is the second milestone that's that's your that which is which are you going to see? So like, uh, okay, here you see two methods: resolve and execute. Execute is the source of my problem. Resolve is working perfectly, like no problems at all. Let me show you the resolve is working perfectly. So let's go to the resolve and. See it working. It resolves the project. It checks in the Jenkins that the project is available or not. Like Jenkins project, not the GitLab project. They are different. Author named it the same, so I was confused a bit. But yeah, they are different. Okay, so it okay, so whoops, pause, project. pause for just a minute. Okay, so we just asked Jenkins, given a project name that was passed in from, no, no, the project name is not passed in from GitLab. It's somehow oh, okay help me on this statement yeah, yeah, the request exactly. that's what's provided by gitlab project yeah. name is that provided also in the webhook or is that something that's known to jenkins there are gitlab project and jenkins project both jenkins project is an item like a freestyle project you know right jenkins project is an item gitlab project is is about the like push event that i'm making it's part of a project and the project is part of a group. So it's a, uh, like divisions that are made in GitLab. So they are quite like 
similar in naming that the author did when he wrote the plugin, but they are different. So take care of that. Right. Okay, could you, before you continue execution, could you take us one level up in the stack to get dynamic line 46? It's in the bottom left-hand corner of your debugger window. There is a, if you just click that row, I think it will take us. Okay, so this is saying get dynamic takes as a project name as an argument okay so it's yeah. not extracting it from the stapler request yeah. it's somehow called with that project name which means it is it still is called by jenkins code and this must be then so project name in this case must be the text after the word slash project in the url is that how get dynamic? What's the value of project name at this point in your call? Is it See, something? This, this, yeah, this this project name that you're saying, it goes to resolve project, okay? And resolve uh -huh. project is all about Jenkins project. So it's not the GitLab project. The GitLab right. project that we are getting is in the stapler request and the stapler, uh, in the stapler request. The request that we are getting from the webhook, it contains the project that is related to the GitLab. This project name is from Jenkins. It is, I am getting it from Jenkins code extension. Yeah, so it's it's not that. It's assume it like it's a freestyle project. Like it should be named kind of freestyle. Thing. It is a freestyle object. It's the name of the freestyle object that we are trying to uh, do something about. Right. But so so this, however, was provided the 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 call to get dynamic happened because you invoked a webhook on GitLab, right? You invoked a GitLab web, webhook. GitLab's webhook made an HTTP request to Jenkins. Jenkins received the re request and the request URL was HTTP colon slash slash my Jenkins colon 8080 slash project slash. And then this name of the project is in that URL, right? And somehow get dynamic was called with project name as that value. So so if if we look at the value of oh yes here it is gitlab dash sample dash job in yeah, your debugger and project. that is the name of a Jenkins project but it was provided yeah. by the GitLab webhook inside no, no. the URL no 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 no, no 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 so so what's happening is once we get the webhook Jenkins code knows that the webhook is for this 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 project like my webhook is for the the GitLab sample project that that is the freestyle that is the freestyle job or the freestyle project. So what it is trying to it is trying to connect both of them. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Like yes. it's trying to co connect the GitLab project and the Jenkins project. And because both of them are project, you are getting confused. They're different. Well, but, okay, so so could you go back to the GitLab page? I'd like to see the definition. So the GitLab the the GitLab oh, web yeah. page where I you invoke the webhook. Right. Show me the webhooks definition. Um, so the in that, what yeah, is the, the URL the used by that webhook? You, no, the oh, one the one that you invoked. So you, in uh, order to call get dynamic here, you invoked a webhook on Get GitLab, didn't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And so, sh uh, can you show me the the URL that was used in that webhook as defined on GitLab? Where is my um, I remember the URL kind of, but yeah, just wait. You should when I debug it more, you should be able to see the URL. It's not okay. So that, that's current. fine. Let's let's continue then. No problem. Let's so we can go back to where you were, back to the top of the stack, resolve line 48. We don't need to, to do any further on that, on this. Okay, okay so a... project is not null and the project yeah. name is GitLab sample, sample job. job. Yeah. Okay, and rest of path parts. Okay, the project all right. Is, is, the project is a freestyle project and the project name is GitLab sample job. Got it, okay. Okay, got it. Uh, this is okay, we'll see it. It it sure shot is going to come apart. So yeah, it does. Okay, so change. now it's going it to work through. 
so what's it it's doing oh it's, it's doing... just a it's, it's just a regex thing okay all right hey it, 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 it was there uh, previously also. It won't affect much. It, I didn't really change much. Uh, most engineers were in the resolve action. So yeah, okay. let's go to the resolve action. So what's happening here is I did a bit of changes here because I needed the project and the request. Why I needed them? Because I abstracted away the detailing of listening. Like what I did was uh, when I was in, uh, talking about the plan of the milestone two, I said I will be having the GitLab hook resolver inside the action resolver itself, but I just abstracted it away just to make things more, a bit more simpler. So what yeah. uh, what this thing is doing, it, it is setting up the project and the request that it is getting from the Jenkins score, get dynamic method, and it is sending it to the GitLab, uh, GitLab hook resolver. I'll show you what the GitLab hook resolver does in a minute. But yeah, yeah it does that, it gets the method. Now, I, we don't need really need to check if the method is post or not, because if it is post, it will be checked already by this thing. Uh, okay, wait a minute. Yeah. It will be checked by this thing. We only need to check if it's a get method or not. So it's not a get method, of course. Now okay. it goes to the web, uh, webhook manager. Now we'll have to check if it's a webhook or a system hook. So what I did was, I assume it was it is both because it uh, we are receiving a post request. We don't know if it's a webhook or a system hook. So we'll have to test whether if it's both, which one it is actually. So Currently it's a webhook, but on, I'll also explain what happens if it's a system hook. So let's first assume it's a system hook. So if it's a system hook, then the webhook, all the things in the webhook, it just runs. But the problem is when it starts to handle the request, it fails. Because it fails, it gets to the GitLab API exception it says, and it says webhook was not supported for the project. Then it will try to implement the system hook and then it will pass. And as it will pass, it uh, will go forward. Okay. So uh, because because it is a webhook thing, so let me do it. But yeah, whenever, like uh, in the example of system hook, as as it progresses, it will return the noop action. Like noop action is like no 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 operations, like no action which, which will be taking place. So it will not go there. It, it, this this is the place where it is not post request or get request or both system hook manager and uh, the webhook manager were not able to get the thing working, which means there is something blunderous like from GitLab for the not from us. So that's when this this thing will take into action. It will also return the noop action, but it it will say unsupported HTTP method. So yeah, currently it's the webhook. So it receives the webhook. Of course, it receives the webhook. Do I see the URL here? No, not yet. It handles the request. And let me show you how it is handling the request. So it goes here and now I am in the GitLab for G. So I'm debugging inside the library. Okay. okay. So it gets, yeah, it gets, it gets the event as it is a push event. Okay. Right there. It sets the URL and then it tries to fire the event, which I set by overriding in the GitLab hook resolver. So like what it will try to do is it will get, because it's a push event, it will try to fire the push event. Oh, I think I just missed it. Oh, don't worry. Yeah. So it will, this will be called right here because, uh, because it will try to fire the push. I just missed it. Like I just extra clicked by cursor. Otherwise it would have been here, but yeah, it will override the on push event that is here and it will try to run the, uh, fire web, fire webhook build action. There are two build actions. Either it's a fire webhook build action or fire system hook build action, depending upon whether we are getting the webhook or the system hook. And then it will be called. And on the fire webhook build action, push build action will be called, uh, which, which will contain all these things which are required. And on, the, on, get, on getting the push build action, push build action, but does not have the distinction between the webhook and the system hook. It receives both of them. And then it does what, what, is, what it used to do in the older plugin. After that, there is no code change. I just added them. So did you understand how it was flowing? I think I've seen how it's flowing. Okay, continue. Yeah, so that, that's where the things end. Like that's where, that's where my changes end. After this, it is the same that was going to happen previously in the plugin and it should be working exactly the same way. And yet it's not working the same or yeah, what, what, like the what problem are you working. seeing then? 
yeah uh, the execute is not working let me show you okay so this execute like once we resolve the project name and the request it re- it uh, needs to execute the response which is which 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 i'm getting error like 404 and 500 and all those things here is the problem like i'll show you again let me read on my ticker okay once i do a push event again yeah so here it is should i show you the resolve again that it is overriding the fire event or it no need i think i think you've shown it yeah so okay fine let's go here let's go to the execute that here is a problem uh otherwise oh, no, it is that fine after execution is done yeah it it directly goes to this like there is no step in between it directly goes to the error that uh, i am having some problem in handling the arguments which i don't know which argument is this thing talking about like uh, i am assuming uh the what what's that called so it, let's it, yeah could you expand yeah, yeah. the arguments array in your debugger so we can look at it so d- down below in the I see arguments at the very bottom of your screen as a four element. Oh, okay, there we go. All right, so it's got the web hook, the web hook, the project name, and then a request and a response. And if you expand yeah. the request, I assume that the request data would tell us something about. It's fine. Like I don't think so. There is any problem in the request data. Okay, and could you expand, contract that? Okay. Collab- oh, go ahead, Chris. Expand it. Check. Oh, but can you expand the request so we can check to see what is? Yeah. yeah. Is there oh, some problem like? Yeah, I see some novels, but I'm not sure if it's that um, problem. Um, I don't know. If I'm sure null can create problems. Like, yeah, it's check. like pass, pass from data is no pass from data form view is no. like what i can uh, what i can say like the problem is right i wanted to check it using the like the previous older version of the gitlab plugin to whether, whether it's working or not but i cannot really reach this thing like functions.java and exactly this argument so i don't know how to get this argument in the older version so, so that I, so that i could cross check whether the things are same or not but yeah like null can be a issue but i am not sure like to be honest I'm not sure about now for this is like they might be problematic cuz like it's a request so we don't want you may not want to have any, like no from data yeah but the problem is i cannot really check it like if okay. it should be null or not i don't have any way to check it so that's that's where the difficulty in this thing comes in like i was anticipating all this because like uh, changing the webhook implementation uh, from that old to that new can create some problem so yeah this this is a this is a issue that i'm not able to resolve from i tried resolving it during my examinations as well but i was not able to get it working but like i did i was able to get it working a bit like previously i was get also uh, i was getting an issue with jenkins core itself but i managed some null pointer exceptions and all those things like i did some tricks here and there and i was able to get the plugin working but even after that i'm getting this 404 so i'll have to look a bit more into this uh, it but like I think I've put in much effort. I'm not able to, still not able to get where the problem is because I'll show you the execution more. It's it's very big. Like I'll have to run through it fast. Otherwise, it will take five six minutes or something just to take take it to the end of four to four. So yeah, it it tries to invoke things. I'm just showing it to you because maybe you guys can help because I'm not able to find any thing. Like it just goes to four to four very quickly. and the methods that it is using i am getting into security and stapler and all which i don't really know much about and i'll have to find way to read about them and all it's an internal problem so the the 404 that it's returning is 404 for a specific page being requested or a specific url being requested from gitlab to jenkins we can see it like this uh, i'll I guess you want to respond, right? Four, four. Yeah. What? 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 
Chris is saying something? Yeah, it's like, it's the response returning, but it's like, we don't know where it's from, no. So far. Yeah, actually, uh, like Mark, uh, Mark asked a really good question, but uh, to even figure it out, you need to understand what's happening in this code, right? Like, just, just look into this. I'll need to understand what's happening. And then I can, like, for sure, then I can, then I will be able to say that, yeah, for this is the reason why it's happening. I'm just currently showing you what, what, what troubles I am facing. Because like I've like a lot of time has been wasted in me trying to figure out which things are where and which things are where. I just wanted to confront things a bit more faster so that I could take the project a bit faster because I'm quite like behind what I wanted to be. So yeah, the target is null. For some reason, um, it is okay. And uh, do 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 you still have that like uh, that um thing is like where you have an? No, it's it's gone actually. I don't think okay, so, no. so the question that we need to answer that we need to help with then is you're trying yeah, to understand. Oh. Go ahead. Back. All three are null, and the target was also null. I don't know why it is null, but I don't think so. It's problematic because there is there is an else implemented, so maybe something. So the the call the location that's being called is get dynamic was there before, yeah. right? It was there previously, and the previous location for it had did it have the same behavior or were you're not sure if it had this same behavior so like, uh, yeah go ahead did did the did get dynamic exist previously i think that's not something yeah. you've added right it was there before yeah and i don't i would have to investigate myself to see what was the behavior previously with get dynamic and how has it changed in this new code? Actually, like I did it myself, of course I did it. So I was trying to get into the same zone. Like I was trying to get into the stapler request and all, but I cannot really get it because as the GitLab, uh, as the get dynamic method finishes, it just gets out of the method and everything executes properly in the older plugin. If you're not getting the, uh, like the error that I'm facing right now, you'll not be able to get into the functions.java class, which is having that error. So yeah, it is quite difficult to trace trace it down in the normal plugin, like the actual plugin that is released and it's working. It is only available in the development version. And that's the okay. problem. All right. I, so, don't, I don't have a comparison point here. Okay. So that, that I think you just said the important thing is you, there isn't, you don't have a comparison point to see how the old code was behaving because as far as you could see from the debugger, it was it was getting through that without you being able to, to break point on it. Yeah, and I also did one thing that I enabled the stapler request, uh, stapler dispatcher login so logging so that I could test if 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 it if it gave me any information, but it's not giving me any much much useful information about it. So yeah, like I tested everything or if I'm asking for help, I've tested every possible thing. Uh, uh, like not uh, something out of the blue, but yeah, I think I've put in the quite a good amount of effort in finding out why this is happening, but I was still not able to get it. So yeah, it's going to be quite of a difficult task to find out what's wrong here. But let me show you more like what's happening here. Just so that you could refer it back to see the debugging process. If any one of you, even if Basil try to debug it around. Oh, hang on. Can, we, can you show me the ways of request and response here? Yeah, why not? Uh, no form fields. It will remain the same because like, it's a request, right? Yeah, it should be the same. Yeah, just want to check. And now the target is not null. So that's what I was talking about. It's null for some time. But like, I think it was getting the target in the process. So it's not null now. Okay. It loops around uh, in, in the stapler request and the security it loops around again and again. So it's a long process. Like it's a long 
debugging process that like if chris are is willing to do it it's it, it it is quite a big thing to do like it is long yeah. and you'll have to read a lot of code yeah so it shows you that it's getting the uh, getting it from the, uh, from the get get dynamic method of the thing yeah it's fine i just want to know where the issue is like why am i getting a 404 the reason is the problem Okay. Okay, so the 404 that you're getting, what's the full URL of the 40 of the of the 404 that's being reported? Yeah. Okay, so it's returning 404 on a post to slash project slash GitLab dash sample dash job, which is certainly was is working in the released plugin because that's the one that we have to provide. And so, yeah. okay, all right. So then, however, that 404, that's, yeah, okay. That 404 is just nonsense in the sense that that URL is certainly there because it was answering before. So there's something inside the re uh, the request routing request. that is yeah. causing it to say 404 not found at some point, whereas it yeah, doesn't like, say that with the current code. Okay, with it, the release. It is able code. to get the URL. That that's for sure. Like it's not like it's not able to get the URL. Maybe it's not able to process the URL, and like the processing part is a huge part. Like. So we'll have to find out exactly where it's not able to process the URL and, have to, and we'll have to fix it. So yeah, that's, it is what it is. Yeah, I think I think that's what what the 404 that's being reported is, is 404 is typically a page not found error, right? I mean, that's that's the yeah. definition of an HTTP 404. Or it could be because like authentication issues, because like you can access due to like not, Able to. But uh, like I have a doubt in, uh, about it because I didn't really change anything related to the execute. So I don't think so. I I messed up with the authentication at all. Like nothing related to that sort I did when I was writing the code. So I'm not sure about it. It, it may happen that I did something messy, but yeah, maybe, not maybe sure. It's not because of you. It could be because the version changed. Forget that. Okay, then that would be out of my control. Like it, it actually would be then more difficult to find it out if it happened due to a version change suddenly. Yeah. That's, that's dangerous. Yeah, but but okay, so so what we've got is we've got a a request coming from GitLab to slash project slash GitLab dash sample dash job, and Jenkins eventually returns. 404 as its 404. response code yeah. and that's it is able to get the request and it's not able that, to process it properly right and so that's the problem now the the thing that you've not been able to deduce is why did the old code not return a 404 and the new code does yeah exactly okay all I right i can't well, compare so, them so i'm not able to draw a conclusion right so i think that at least gives us some place that I may be able to help. I've got a got to help. A, I've got a family project this weekend that's going to take many hours, but I may be able to help by spending some time staring at this, trying to see if I can duplicate the 404 with the new code that you're seeing, trying to help. I will. I won't be available after Monday of next week because I'm taking four days off to go play with my grandchildren. Okay. So, so there's a danger that we won't have much help for you <clears throat> before you're scheduled to meet with Chris and others next week. I apologize for that, but I'm not going to cancel my vacation to help. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's absolutely fine. Actually. I, I think Chris would be much better of an help because he already has all these things set up and he's more, he's a maintainer, right? So he's technically more sound to all these things. And other than this, actually, if you try to read through all this code, like, it it sounds easy, but it is but it is actually not. There is not much stapler uh, request documentation available in the Jenkins uh, GitHub. So yeah, there is not much documentation. And I also asked in the I think in some like a uh, channel 
about whether I could get some help on it or not. And they and uh, the kind people actually helped me and they, they said to read the code. And that's what I was doing. But the code base was so huge. It took a lot of time to read. So mm -hmm. I don't really recommend you do this because like uh, it's difficult. Like it's not easy. Oh, but but again, somebody's somebody's got to do it, and and so yeah. there. Basel that, reminds me regularly that it's not like we can rely on somebody else to read the code. We have to read the code and figure out what's going on. So no shame yeah. in that. It just it takes yeah. time and energy. So yeah, there's a danger. I won't it's, be able to help with it this week. We may end up delaying. Is this going to? is there any way is this i assume blocks you from other things are there other things you can do working on tests for instance or others while 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 we're looking for more help for you like why i was not able to push things more fast because i was getting blocked by the tests and the milestone to this error and the test error that i'll be showing you after this i am blocked by these two from at least two weeks and i was trying to find my way out of them but like i was busy with my examinations i was still trying to squeeze out some time to just for the project and i was trying to find things out but i was not able to get it so like yeah can't help okay so so given that you were during examination period you wouldn't you you certainly couldn't have invested the same amount of time are there things you can continue doing or have is this blocking you completely harsh i mean my worry is have has all progress stopped because this yeah. of this problem yeah like the, the two problems that i'm facing um i will try to make the test work more like i'll make it my first priority that i make the milestone one test work but milestone two is blocked due to this because i'm not able to do the interactive testing and until and unless i'm uh, i am able to do in the interactive testing i won't be able to do the unit testing as well so it blocks the milestone two i can work on the milestone one for the for meanwhile but yeah i think like we should be worried about it like okay this is quite good. a major so part and this yeah. this will block this is blocking milestone two but you've yeah. got work that you can do on milestone one while yeah. while okay that's good so that means you're not you're not stopped from all progress while while waiting for others on this or for waiting for help let's have you continue I'll, on I'll, milestone one and we'll see yeah. what we can do to find a way to help further with with this problem yeah i maybe, also did yeah uh, you spend more time on this too yeah you'll you need to spend a lot of time right? a lot of time Not but yeah <laughs> but well, i also uh did some changes like uh what that called test changes in the milestone two unit test i did i did some things because i was not able to get this thing working so i was quite depressed and then i did some more changes like i also added some documentation changes that i'll be making after the project gets over and i also did some unit test uh, unit test adaptation for milestone two also but yeah I think this is a quite a big blocker, and I and I need to solve it quite fast. I'll also be doing it, like, but I don't have any clear idea how to solve it right now. So that's that's more of a problem. If I have the idea, how can I solve it? I will find some way out. But if I don't have the clear cut idea of why it is happening, then it's a huge problem. Like, right? then I cannot really propose a solution to it. Okay. I think we need to work towards like something tangible together over the next few weeks. Yeah, like I'll not try to extend it for next two weeks. Like uh, a week should be fine to find out what's actually happening. Uh, it cannot be really that bad because if it's that bad, I'll try re-implementing the milestone two again. It will take me hardly a day to re-implement it, and maybe it will be gone. But I just want to know what's happening inside and like debugging the stapler requests and the security and everything that is related to Jenkins core is, is, is a tedious task to say the least. So yeah, hard working week, but I have some holidays, right? So I can work hard. No problems at all. Okay. Uh, maybe I can help too. Yeah, I'll, I'll need help. Like seriously. Yeah. Okay, so this was the first problem you wanted to show us. Do you want to switch and show us the second? 
like let me uh, just go fastly fast towards the 404 that we will be having just so that we could have the recording for the debugging that i did so if any would like if basil uh, if basil wanted to see if what's what's going wrong or what's going right then he could see it and maybe he could figure something out he he has some experience with the stapler requests and all so yeah okay it's a quite a long debugging process and i have to make it a bit fast I think it will take five five minutes or more. Okay, because I have a hard stop in nine that I have to go to another meeting. Oh, that's bad. So okay, I could so I, I could certainly pass the control of or actually it doesn't matter because Chris is already the the host, and so if you need to continue without me, you can continue and I can watch the recording later. Okay. Rubbish. Or so maybe like, we, we can try to uh, continue like afterwards, after this meeting is over. Sure. We, can, we can set up set another meeting, just go over this debugging issue. Yeah, like I'll show you the uh, another debugging issue also, like about the testing that what what's causing the test test to block in the first milestone. Okay. Did I like the? Uh, yeah, maybe we could stop sharing. It will. I. It's already ten twenty two here, so yeah, it it has already passed the time that I should be having. Yeah. I said it was it was going to be a long meeting, so yeah. Sorry about sorry about that. No, no problem. A long meeting, if if the meeting helps, that's great. That is not a problem. So like uh, anything else? Okay, the test containers thing I said you right. So yeah, yeah you uh yeah you can leave. I can I can discuss more technical things with Chris. Uh, and I'm gonna get some help. But yeah, that's that's where the project is right now. That that you should be knowing that I am kind of blocked here. I need to if I get out of this blocker, the road ahead is quite simple. Like it's just testing and all. This is the main blocker of the project, like the main meat. Okay. All right. So finding a way to duplicate the 404 that you're seeing. And then find understanding why is it replying with 404 now when the old code did not, and and what what is the root problem there? That that sounds like that's the biggest problem for you. Yeah. Okay, so I'll have to see what I can squeeze in in terms of weekend debugging. I've I've got these other things that that need my time, but let me see what I can do. Okay. So Harsh, did you want to show us? We've we've got a, up to seven more minutes before I have to drop off. Are there other things you would like to show us at this point? Or this is, are we at the point where we should stop for now and and consider meeting again another time? Yeah, you can meet me another time, like in the next week's project, because I'll be showing a lot of debugging after this also to Chris. So yeah, like it's just technical debugging, nothing more. Yeah, maybe we should have a time tomorrow to go over the debugging part. Yeah, like that because yeah. uh, today also I slept around five hours, so I need to sleep also. But yeah. Okay. Okay. So nothing, so like nothing more. So, so you're okay then if I disconnect at this point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, all right. So, Chris, I'll let you continue, and then I'm happy to upload the recording afterwards. Oh, we, can, we can, we can, we can, uh, we can end the meeting today. Oh, okay. Yeah, we can end the meeting, and like uh, we can have the meeting tomorrow. I can have a meeting yeah. tomorrow with Chris yeah. regarding the, uh, the debugging things that I'm facing right now. Yeah, we can do it tomorrow. Because I need some time to like go over what what I missed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So we can All actually right. end the meeting. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Then then let's call it an end for today, and I'll I'll try to do some debugging later today my time, and then the two of you will attempt to meet tomorrow. If you if you copy me on it, if I'm available at the time you choose to meet, I'll join. Uh, okay. I. It it will depend on when you choose to meet as to whether or not I'm available. 
Yeah, sure. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Then I'm going to drop off. Thanks very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye.